In this example problem, we're given a table with information about curves, and these are vertical curves, and we're asked to determine the elevation of the endpoint of the vertical alignment. We're told that the project overall begins at station 31 plus 67 and has a grade of negative 2.32%, and that beginning station has an elevation of 3,244.8 feet and that the project ends at station 67 plus 84. We're also asked to determine the elevation of the center line of the roadway at station 36. So it always helps to take our information and particularly for alignment problems to draw this. So we can start out by drawing the tangents and if you're just working a problem, you don't have to be extremely precise, but just draw them in, in, in relative terms. So we had our, we were told that our entering grade for the overall project is negative 2.32%. Our table gave us the remaining exit grades. So they go in succession, negative 1.03%, positive 4.16%, and negative 2.99%. We were also given our beginning station information. So the project starts there at station 31 plus 67 with an elevation of 3244.8. Then moving into our first curve, so curve C1, we were told that the PVC station is 34 plus 80 and the PVT station is 41 plus 80. The grade coming out, the exit grade is negative 1.03. And the actual alignment would follow that vertical curve. There would be a vertical curve that separates from the tangents between those points. Then moving to curve 2, we are given a PVC station of 49 plus 65, a PVT station of 58 plus 65, and an exit grade of 4.16. And again, the smooth curve there to tie that together. Again, this is curve 2. We already did curve 1. And finally, to curve three, we have a PVC station of 62, a PVT station of 67, and an exit grade of negative 2.99, and a curve to connect that. And we are told that the overall alignment ends at station 67 plus 84. So that's the, we're looking for the elevation of that point at the end of the alignment. So we have our three curves, C1, C2, and C3. And so that's our basic given information. And so we should always start with a drawing that looks like this, where we've got our grades drawn, we've got our curves drawn and located with the PVCs and PVTs. We have the beginning station, we have the ending station, which is what we're looking for. So ultimately we want the elevation at that station 67 plus 84. So there are multiple ways that you can work this problem. I'm gonna approach it from the standpoint of it's a vertical alignment problem, so we don't have to actually follow the, the curvature here if we're just moving from the beginning to the end and finding the elevation of the point that's on a, on a grade or on a tangent there, so we don't have to follow the, each curve. And what we can do to establish these elevations of the PI, PVIs as we move along uh, and we can bypass the curve. So starting with just the, the grades that we have and our beginning information, that's the elevation that we're going to start with to move along this alignment. So our PVI is always for a symmetric parabolic curve, which is going to be our standard assumption for vertical curves, is going to be halfway between the PVC and PVT. So if we take the halfway point between each of these numbers, starting with the first one, curve one, we're going to get a PVI station of 38 plus 30. For curve two, it's 54 plus 15. Again, it's the mid midpoint between the PVC and PVT. And for curve three, 64 plus 50. Again, the midpoint between 62 and 67. And again, we're looking for that final point on the alignment, station 67 plus 84. 
And so the way we can work this again, we can just move along with each segment connecting starting point to PVI1 to PVI2 to PVI3 and finally the ending point which is the elevation we're looking for. So this first segment, we can find the distance and essentially we're looking for the distance between these two numbers. That's going to tell us the distance. So 38 plus 30 minus 31 plus 67 will give us a distance of 663 feet and at negative 2.32 percent slope is going to give us an elevation change of negative 15.3816 feet. So it's a drop in elevation of about 15.4 feet. We can move to the next segment now and the distance is 1585 feet. So it's the just subtracting the stations of PVI2 and PVI1. We're going to multiply that distance by our grade of negative 1.03% and it will find we'll find a drop in elevation of 16.3255 feet. So over that 1585 feet we're going to drop a little over 16 feet in elevation. For the third segment, so going between PVI3 and PVI2, has a distance of a lot of 1,035 feet. Again, we're looking at the distance, the difference between these stations of the PVIs. The slope is an upgrade of 4.16 percent. So the elevation change over that 1,035 feet is 43.056 feet. And finally, for segment four, we have a distance of 30, 334 feet. It's so taking our ending station and subtracting PVI of curve three from it at a negative 2.99% slope. We're going to find an elevation change of negative 9.9866 feet. So a drop in almost 10 feet over that 334 foot segment. So the overall elevation change, all we need to do now is go back and add up each of these components. So negative 15.38, negative 16.32, positive 43.056, and negative 9.98. And it's going to give us a change in elevation from the beginning station to the end of 1.3623 feet. So over all those, those four different grades, the ultimate difference is just 1.36 feet above where we started. So we need to go back to our given information. We were told that we start at an elevation of 3244.8 feet. We're going to add in that delta and it's going to give us a final elevation at the end of our alignment of 3246.162 feet for our final elevation. And so that's our final answer here given for that part of the of the problem. We're also asked to determine the elevation of the center line of the roadway at station 36. So we can take the given information that we have, we already, we already understand and know the alignment of this part of the roadway. We're looking at station 36, so it's on curve one. We've got an entrance grade of G1 of negative 2.32%, an exit grade G2 of negative 1.03 percent. We should recall that when we're looking for elevation we're going to need to use the parabolic equation y equals ax squared plus bx plus c. So for a we're going to need to use g2 and g1 that we just looked at. The length is the difference between our PVT and our PVC so we're just going to subtract 3480 from 4180 to get our length. B is just the grade G1, the entrance grade. C is the PVC elevation and we can use our given information to help determine this. So we were told that at station 31 plus 67 we have a station, we have an elevation of 3244.8 feet. So in order to solve for our PVC elevation we need to look at how much change in elevation we get between that known point and our PVC elevation. Typically you're given the PVI 
elevation, so that's what's shown in this equation here. In this case, we weren't given the PVI elevation, so we have to use a different equation this time. We need to use the, the numbers and the values that we were given. So we're going to start with that given 3244.8 feet. We're going to go down the grade 2.32% the distance between the starting point, which was 31 plus 67, and the PVC station, that's what we're looking for. So we're going to multiply those, that grade by that difference in the distance, and we're going to find a PVC elevation of 3237.5384. So that's our PVC elevation. So now we can move forward with knowing A, B, and C. We also can determine x, so in our parabolic equation, x is the horizontal distance along the stationing axis. So we need to go from the PVC to the point of interest, and that is 120 feet. And then for our equation, it needs to be in stations, so that's 1.2 stations that we're going to use for x for our equation. So now we're going to take that information, we're going to determine what our actual components customizing that parabolic equation for our particular curve. Again, we're looking at curve C1, so it's an equation that only works for curve C1. We're building this custom equation for it. We're looking for the elevation at station 36. And when we plug in the numbers that we talked about previously, we'll have an A of... 0 0.0921, a B of negative 2.32, and our C, which is the PVC elevation of 3237.5384. Our X is 1.2, or 1.2 stations from the PVC. So we're looking for Y, which is the elevation at station 36. The equation to solve now is 0.0921 multiplied by 1.2 squared minus 2.32 multiplied by 1.2 plus the PVC elevation 3237.5384 gives us an elevation at station 36 of 3234.88 feet. So that's our final answer for the elevation of the center line at station 36.